Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Korean, Ms. Suzan, Mr. Avnish, Mr. Rajgopalan, other senior uh, leaders from the Retail Association of India, RAI, members of the Hyderabad chapter, greetings to all of you and uh, very happy to meet many of you again. I don't think six months have gone by since we last met in the last event. When was it? One, one year, almost a year. Okay. But nevertheless, the <clears throat> practice of bringing back these kind of industry focused events to Hyderabad and bringing domain experts as going through the program looks like a very, very uh, useful and very productive kind of agenda for the day when you will be learning about uh, lots of new trends, new technologies, new opportunities from domain experts. So eventually advancement can happen only through knowledge sharing. And I'm delighted that the retail summit is again happening here in Hyderabad. Since the last time that we interacted, there are many pieces of good news to share. And I'm sure those who are in Hyderabad would be familiar with all that. The first and the most talked about good news is the government order, the recent order which permits stores to remain open 24 by 7, which is a, which is a very uh, kind of much anticipated decision. And I can share this with you. Since I had some role in this decision being made, this decision had come actually at the at the request of the retailers in fact there are many it's 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 not a request which had come from consumers of course i'm also the it secretary as some of you would know so i do meet the it company employees and all that there is a demand from them as well but the bigger request was from retailers particularly from e-commerce players and those who are actually into hyper local kind of deliveries they actually told us that at odd hours they get request to supply a bottle of milk or a loaf of bread and obviously if nothing is open. So they, their request was that allow some nominated stores, neighborhood Kirana stores to be opened wherein we can stock things and they can become the delivery points or collection points. But when at the government level, when this request was getting evaluated, we thought why allow only some numbers to remain open? Let us make it available to everyone. Of course, it also brings with it its own responsibilities because you have to now provide for uh, <clears throat> better uh, surveillance, cameras, safety expectations, commute, com consumer uh, experiences and so on and so forth. But I'm sure that uh, between all of us, the retail industry will be able to match up to the expectations of the government, the police department in particular. and hopefully in no time will become a real model city in how retail is encouraged and promoted, which balances cons cons customers' expectations and also what the retailer wants. So this is again a very historic decision. I also would like to share with you that uh, I, do, I don't recall whether I had mentioned this last year or not, but I would like to tell you now that uh, our partnership, the government has a partnership with a technology provider, which is assisting particularly small retailers in their digitalization journey. That partnership is with a company called Global Linkers. And between last year and now, there is a huge amount of onboarding. And uh, the last uh, number that, I don't have precise number uh, as on today, but the last time when I had reviewed this and I was told about it, more than 8,500 uh, retailers, particularly in the small category. They have chosen to partner with global linkers and they are getting lots of benefits. They are able to convert their brick and mortar store into an online store. They are taught how to, first of all, that entire uh, web portal is developed absolutely free of cost under the ages of this partnership. They are taught how to maintain inventories online, how to create a payment gateway, how to service their orders, how to, how to up, upgrade their, uh, order the, order the inventory which is getting uh, exhausted or depleted just on time and so on and so forth. So technology is becoming a very important game changer. And I'm happy that when Mr. Rajgopalan was mentioning, was making his remarks, he did speak about uh, 
the ONDC, the Open uh, uh, Network for Digital Commerce, which has been introduced. In fact, a uh, few months ago, Mr. Koshi, who is the CEO of uh, this organization promoted by Government of India, he was in Hyderabad and he was sharing some early successes and explaining on how their model works. So when we mentioned to him that whatever you are doing at the national level, a lot of it is being already done through our Global Linkers partnership. He was also very impressed and he wanted the entire Global Linkers uh, network that we have acquired to be transitioned into ONDC, which we will be doing uh, over the next, uh, in the course of time. But we will again have a head start in how do you use technology in uh, promoting the interest of particularly mid-scale retailers. See, large companies uh, who are present here, they already have mastered how digital works, how online works. In fact, much of your traffic possibly comes online. I know that uh, IKEA, while they opened their first physical store in the country in Hyderabad, but they also realized that online is a big opportunity. So the Hyderabad store offers both an online uh, shopping experience as well, of course, an in-person experience. But later on in Bombay and Delhi and other places, they actually front-ended the online stores first. So the online stores took precedence over uh, physical stores. So that is one good piece of news. I remember in the last summit where I had interacted with you, I had mentioned this and I'm recollected of that point because uh, Mr. Kumar is here on the dais, which was to make use of uh, startups who are today bringing lots of innovative technologies, lots of solutions at very, very affordable costs. And uh, the scale up opportunities of those solutions is also pretty high. And because Hyderabad is a very important center for innovation and entrepreneurship, I had proposed that as an organization, as a collective, you should look at what kind of pain points, what kind of challenges you still have. Individual members can do that. As an organization of uh, uh, the retailers, you can do that as a collective or the Hyderabad chapter can do that. But we have brilliant institutions today like our T-Hub, T-Works, V-Hub, etc which will help you in scouting for these startup solutions. You just need to tell us what your challenges are and we will be able to bring dozens and dozens of solution providers and do that matchmaking. And literally at, uh, possibly at no cost to anyone at all. And only after the solution is validated, you feel that it is worth deploying, then you can negotiate bilaterally the commercials between you and that startup or that solution provider. So I said that I, was re reminded of this point by looking at Mr. Avnish because you have visited uh, T-Hub on multiple occasions, not through Rai, isn't it? You went as YP or uh, something. Yeah. So he has gone there in uh, some other capacity, but I'm sure that the experience that you have got there and the T-Hub people also told me that they found your interaction with the startups to be very enriching mutually. I mean, just as you would have benefited from understanding their perspectives and their knowledge, you also gave them some very valuable insights and good perspectives. So they were appreciative of the fact that you went there and spent time. But now that we are sharing this uh, platform of Rai, please think if the association also can engage formally with uh, innovators and startups, etc. So that is uh, another point which I have been making on earlier occasions as well and I wanted to reiterate. And the buoyancy in some of these uh, innovators is unbelievable. The kind of creative work which is happening here in Hyderabad. And the advantage is, see, people like Mr. Korean and others are here who don't live in Hyderabad. They are not, they don't, they don't have a very direct kind of interface with things which happen here on a day-to-day -day basis. They may say that why are we claiming that there is innovation happening? Much, much more innovation is happening let us say in Bangalore or somewhere else, which is true, I'm not denying it. I'm not claiming that Hyderabad is the only place in the world where innovation happens. It is absolutely true that much more innovation happens in a city like Bangalore. But there is no organized setup through which you can be a part of that innovation that is happening. If a retailer or an association in Bangalore has to scout for startups, I mean, you will just not know where to begin and where to end. It will be so complicated and confusing. But in Hyderabad, we offer platforms through which you can seamlessly plug in 
into these kind of innovation ecosystems. And T-Hub is one example, but there are other platforms also. And we'll be happy if you actually uh, volunteer that uh, the next interaction that we want to have in Hyderabad, please organize it in T-Hub. Please ask 50 startups to pitch before us what kind of ideas they have for the retail sector. It will take just 10 days of advanced preparation for me to make it happen which will be impossible to do in any other city. So that is the difference which I wanted to highlight between Hyderabad and uh, other cities. Another point which uh, also is a kind of a repetition is to look at the opportunities which our uh, tier two, tier three, and even semi-rural kind of uh, destinations in Telangana are providing. This data has come out uh, pretty often and it has come out again just about a week ago that Telangana leads the country in terms of per capita income. The best per capita income anywhere in the country is uh, Telangana. And uh, the best per capita income growth also is the highest in Telangana. I remember in 2014, when our state had become a new state, the per capita income was just about 1,70,000 odd thousand, which has gone 130 times, uh, 130 percentage up. It has now become the best in the country. Now, obviously, the per capita income is an average, but it is not a skewed average. See, normally, when we talk about these kind of numbers, there is some skepticism that some ultra wealthy people will have most of the wealth, and therefore the per capita goes up, but the average becomes low. The av I mean, the, the bottom remains low, not the average. But in Telangana, that is not true. Wealth is fairly equitably distributed largely because of the rural prosperity which has come due to agriculture. Many of you who live in this state will know this, that our state has made heavy investments in irrigation, in agriculture extension, in direct transfers to the farmers, and the rural prosperity is very high. And again, this is a state which is fairly, high, fairly well globalized. And uh, <clears throat> in fact, the other day, someone was asking me, possibly in joke, but he was asking me whether there is a law in Telangana that at, le at least one member of every family has to be in the US. He was asking whether there is a law which uh, makes it compulsory that everyone has to be in the US. So, of course, I told him that there is no law for sure, but over the years that has become the practice. So, the levels of globalization is pretty high. Even the rural families have folks back in the US. In fact, that was one of the reasons you may not know this, Suzanne, but uh, as I was telling you, I was associated with IKEA starting the store right from day one, from the initial discussion stage till the land was given, till permissions were given and the store <clears throat> got opened. In fact, I was invited till the first anniversary, second anniversary. Now I'm not invited anymore. So, <laughs> so no, no, of course, I, I, I don't want to invite myself, but if I'm not invited, it also, means that everything is going well, so you don't require the government anymore, which is a good thing to have. But the point which I'm trying to make is that the reason uh, IKEA chose to open their first store in Hyderabad, they could have done it in Bombay, they could have done it in Delhi. One of the reasons they chose to do it in Hyderabad was because this internal survey which showed to them exactly this, that the familiarity with IKEA is much more amongst people who are in Hyderabad and Telangana, because they have seen IKEA stores all over in the US and rest of the world. So you don't have to advertise to them what is IKEA, what kind of furniture and other home furnishing products are available. So because the aspirations are high, incomes are matching now, infrastructure is good, there are beautiful roads which connect all the district headquarters to Hyderabad, power supply is 24 by seven, cost of operations, cost of logistics is still, still reasonably low. We actually, are waiting for this retail revolution to happen in the smaller towns and district headquarters in Telangana. And we would really like the association to, as a collective, to help us or to partner with us in making this happen. We are willing to work with you in designing a suitable business model through which you don't have to take the trouble of agglomerating the land, 
we will make land available we will give all the permissions by default you don't have to apply for any permission all permissions are deemed to be given we'll make all the license fees and everything reasonable so that uh, more and more uh, retail opportunities come one question whenever whenever i have spoken about these topics earlier also and elsewhere also one question which automatically comes is that large number of skilled manpower will be required for the retail sector and again we are prepared we have a fantastic institution in the government which is called task the telangana academy for skills and knowledge and uh, <clears throat> if you tell us that many of our members are willing to open uh, these kind of retail facilities we'll be happy to train people at our cost and make them available to you so the board says time is up no no but i i still need uh, to mention a couple of more things is it seriously up or is it uh, it is just a kind of a joke it's it's okay no no but in any case uh, i i don't want to speak uh, on and on and on but couple of other points very quick points which i wanted to mention is that i spoke about technology i spoke about innovation i spoke about rural i spoke about the new uh, the new uh, uh, government order which has which has uh, which has come up which which should uh, help you please benefit from it two other things which i want to speak one which i want to speak quite uh, strongly and emphatically we don't monitor it we don't ask for data etc but i have asked i would like to ask my team to keep a keep an eye on in on it keep track of it which is about local sourcing this is something which is very very important to me and if you invite me again for another edition of the rai summit and if i'm given just one minute to talk about i'll only speak about sourcing and nothing else we are very keen that all the retailers who run retail operations in hyderabad i mean in the state also in hyderabad they must give as much of uh, prominence to local manufacturers local growers local producers and we will work with you if you tell us so i mean just to take your example if you tell us that i do a particular kind of embroidery that sells very well but no one in telangana makes it i get it only from jaipur or calcutta i'll be happy to figure out who, what it will take to motivate uh, telangana weavers or you know textile makers or women to learn that skill and maintain your standards i'm not asking you to dilute your standards if you have to procure locally it's not that you have to do a favor and dilute standards dilute your uh, i mean compromise on your price points or anything without diluting on anything we want you to give preference and uh, i would like to actively uh, work with the association to find out which are the items that you are uh, kind of uh, selling what is it that you are getting from outside which are the ones which are sold in large volumes connect us with the producers of those companies we would be willing to encourage them to come and set up their manufacturing facilities in telangana many of you who live here will be aware that our industrial policy is rated amongst the best in the country it is called tsi pass and in the last 8 years now 9 years actually almost 45 billion dollars worth of new investments have come in our state from the who's who of the manufacturing world so we have a very established proven track record and uh, we would like to help uh, get uh, these companies also come to telangana give them locations give them uh, incentives give them the infrastructure they require manpower they require but local sourcing is again something which is very important for uh, food products we would again uh, look at opportunities to source it from our farmers we have a good uh, chain of what are called farmer producers organizations etc so if uh, there is a particular uh, agri food commodity that you are processing and selling we would like again that sourcing to be traced back to telangana so this is uh, one thing the last thing which i would like to mention to you i <clears throat> was uh, uh, when i was thinking about uh, this particular point which i should speak here i was reminded about uh, a similar association like yours who have turned around this thought of mine into a very strong and very impactful action which is to support needy people in the community that is uh, uh, 
uh, in our uh, official language, we call it corporate social responsibility. I don't know what term you use. You also use the same term. So CSR. So that is the term that you use. Giving back to the community or let us say sharing with the community. So the other association who responded to this thought, I was addressing their association on, on uh, like this only. It, it was similarly attended. That is called the Hotels and Restaurants Association of India, HRAI. They started a chapter in Hyderabad. They invited me to inaugurate that chapter. And I spoke to them on various other topics also. But I did mention, see, uh, some of you will be aware that uh, food waste is a very big problem in our country, in the world, actually. Lots of food gets wasted. And hotels and restaurants are obviously the sources of lots of that food wastage. So I guided them on creating some programs, etc. And since then, I have been told that every day, they have a very structured way in which all that food waste is collected. It is sent to orphanages, it is sent to homeless night shelters, and so on and so forth. So I would request, uh, of course, individual members would be doing charity and philanthropy and CSR. I know that Avnish does lots of charity in his personal capacity. But as Rai, Hyderabad chapter, would you like to adopt a particular kind of signature program? It could be anything. I, it's not that I have something in mind which I want to impose on you. You can identify a list of half a dozen potential programs and I can guide you on which are the ones which will have the biggest impact, which are the ones which the government would like to support. Because in the government's uh, official system, apart from IT and industries, I also look after CSR. So again, uh, I'm trying to push as many companies as possible, as many associations as possible to contribute to uh, charity, to support people. During COVID times, we know that everyone has uh, been very, very generous. We were able to survive COVID, not because of the government, but because of people like you who were so generous in supporting and donating and helping each other. But now that COVID is behind us, that surge amongst ourselves to be of help to others, that should not stop. And this is a good occasion as an association to take some collective responsibility. So please think about it. It's not that I want you to respond to me instantly, but over a period of time, some of you, some of the industry leaders, this uh, Yash is not here today. Yeah. So I saw his name as the sponsors. Yeah, he's right on the top. So, <clears throat> I mean, we can talk to him, you, some of the others. You don't live in Hyderabad, isn't it? Okay, but when are you moving in? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked the same thing 10 minutes ago. Okay, but do motivate the store manager to become a part of the charity work which is happening here. But once again, I'm very grateful to all of you for uh, all the support and uh, all your uh, active uh, dynamism, which has converted uh, Hyderabad today as one of the most livable cities in the country. People appreciate the kind of social infrastructure, the shopping opportunities, the hospitality opportunities that they get here. And uh, people who live here have come from different parts of the country, different parts of the world. They really enjoy living here in Hyderabad. So let us spread that in other towns and uh, uh, locations and destinations in Telangana. And some of the other things that I spoke about, I hope you will be able to see value in whatever I shared and hopefully you will be able to reciprocate. So once again, uh, thanks very much for inviting me and have a wonderful uh, session ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please ask 50 startups to pitch before us what kind of ideas they have for the retail sector. It will take just 10 days of advanced preparation for me to make it happen which will be impossible to do in any other city. So that is the difference which I wanted to highlight between Hyderabad and uh, other cities. Another point which uh, also is a kind of a repetition is to look at the opportunities which our uh, tier two, tier three, and even semi-rural kind of uh, destinations in Telangana are providing. This data has come out uh, pretty often and it has come out again just about a week ago that Telangana leads the country in terms of per capita income. The best per capita income anywhere in the country is uh, Telangana. And uh, the best per capita income growth also is the highest in Telangana. I remember in 2014, when our state had become a new state, the per capita income was just about 1,70,000 or 1,000. 
which has gone 130 times, uh, 130 percentage up. It has now become the best in the country. Now, obviously, the per capita income is an average, but it is not a skewed average. See, normally, when we talk about these kind of numbers, there is some skepticism that some ultra wealthy people will have most of the wealth, and therefore the per capita goes up, but the average becomes low. The av I mean, the the bottom remains low, not the average. But in Telangana, that is not true. Wealth is fairly equitably distributed, largely because of the rural prosperity, which has come due to agriculture. Many of you who live in this state will know this, that our state has made heavy investments in irrigation, in agriculture extension, in direct transfers to the farmers. And the rural prosperity is very high. And again, this is a state which is fairly High, fairly well globalized and uh, <clears throat> in fact the other day someone was asking me possibly in joke but he was asking me whether there is a law in Telangana that at, le at least one member of every family has to be in the US. He was asking whether there is a law which uh, makes it compulsory that everyone has to be in the US. So of course I told him that there is no law for sure but over the years that has become the practice. So the levels of globalization is pretty high. Even the rural families have folks back in the US. In fact, that was one of the reasons. You may not know this, Suzanne, but uh, as I was telling you, I was associated with IKEA starting the store right from day one, from the initial discussion stage till the land was given, till permissions were given and the store <clears throat> got opened. In fact, I was invited till the first anniversary, second anniversary. Now I'm not invited anymore. So, so no, no, of course, I, I, I don't want to invite myself, but if I'm not invited, it also means that everything is going well. So you don't require the government anymore, which is a good thing to have. But the point which I'm trying to make is that the reason uh, IKEA chose to open their first store in Hyderabad, they could have done it in Bombay, they could have done it in Delhi. One of the reasons they chose to do it in Hyderabad was because this internal survey which showed to them exactly this, that the familiarity with IKEA is much more amongst people who are in Hyderabad and Telangana because they had seen IKEA stores all over in the US and rest of the world. So you don't have to advertise to them what is IKEA, what kind of furniture and other home furnishing products are available. So because the aspirations are high, incomes are matching now, infrastructure is good, there are beautiful roads which connect all the district headquarters to Hyderabad. Power supply is 24 by 7. Cost of operations, cost of logistics is still, still reasonably low. We actually are waiting for this retail revolution to happen in the smaller towns and district headquarters in Telangana. And we would really like the association to, as a collective, to help us or to partner with us in making this happen. We are willing to work with you in designing a suitable business model through which you don't have to take the trouble of agglomerating the land. We will make land available. We will give all the permissions by default. You don't have to apply for any permission. All permissions are deemed to be given. We'll make all the license fees and everything reasonable so that uh, more and more uh, retail opportunities come. One question, whenever, whenever I have spoken about these topics earlier also and elsewhere also, one question which automatically comes is that large number of skilled manpower will be required for the retail sector. And again, we are prepared. We have a fantastic institution in the government, which is called TASC, the Telangana Academy for Skills and Knowledge. And uh, <clears throat> if you tell us that many of our members are willing to open uh, these kind of retail facilities, we'll be happy to train people at our cost and make them available to you. So the board says time is up. No, no, but I, I still need uh, to mention a couple of more things. Is it seriously up or is it uh, it is just a kind of a joke? It's, it's okay. No, no, but in any case, uh, I, I don't want to speak uh, on and on and on. But a couple of other points, very quick points, which I wanted to mention is that I spoke about technology. I spoke about innovation. I spoke about rural. I spoke about the new... Uh, the new uh, uh, government order which has which has uh, which has come up which which should uh, help you please benefit from it two other things which i want to speak one which i want to speak quite uh, strongly and emphatically 
we don't monitor it we don't ask for data etc but i have asked i would like to ask my team to keep a keep an eye on in, on it keep track of it which is about local sourcing this is something which is very very important to me and if you invite me again for another edition of the rai summit and if i'm given just one minute to talk about i'll only speak about sourcing and nothing else we are very keen that all the retailers who run retail operations in hyderabad i mean in the state also in hyderabad they must give as much of uh, prominence to local manufacturers local growers local producers and we will work with you if you tell us so i mean just to take your example if you tell us that i do a particular kind of embroidery that sells very well but no one in telangana makes it i get it only from jaipur or calcutta i'll be happy to figure out who, what it will take to motivate uh, telangana weavers or you know textile makers or women to learn that skill and maintain your standards i'm not asking you to dilute your standards if you have to procure locally it's not that you have to do a favor and dilute standards dilute your uh, i mean compromise on your price points or anything without diluting on anything we want you to give preference and uh, i would like to actively uh, work with the association to find out which are the items that you are uh, kind of uh, selling what is it that you are getting from outside which are the ones which are sold in large volumes connect us with the producers of those companies we would be willing to encourage them to come and set up their manufacturing facilities in telangana many of you who live here will be aware that our industrial policy is rated amongst the best in the country it is called tsi pass and in the last 8 years now 9 years actually almost 45 billion dollars worth of new investments have come in our state from the who's who of the manufacturing world so we have a very established proven track record and uh, we would like to help uh, get uh, these companies also come to telangana give them locations give them uh, incentives give them the infrastructure they require manpower they require but local sourcing is again something which is very important for uh, food products we would again uh, look at opportunities to source it from our farmers we have a good uh, chain of what are called farmer producers organizations etc so if uh, there is a particular uh, agri uh, food commodity that you are processing and selling we would like again that sourcing to be traced back to telangana so this is uh, one thing the last thing which i would like to mention to you i <clears throat> was uh, uh, when i was thinking about uh, this particular point which i should speak here i was reminded about uh, a similar association like yours who have turned around this thought of mine into very strong and very impactful action which is to support needy people in the community that is uh, 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 in our uh, official language we call it corporate social responsibility i don't know what term you use you also use the same term so csr so that is the term that you use giving back to the community or let us a sharing with the community so the other association who responded to this thought i was addressing their association on on uh, like this only it it was similarly attended that is called the hotels and restaurants association of india hrai they started a chapter in hyderabad they invited me to inaugurate that chapter and i spoke to them on various other topics also but i did mention see uh, some of you will be aware that uh, food waste is a very big problem in our country in the world actually lots of food gets wasted and hotels and restaurants are obviously the sources of lots of that food wastage so i guided them on creating some programs etc and since then i have been told that every day they have a very structured way in which all that food waste is collected it is sent to orphanages it is sent to homeless night shelters and so on and so forth so i would request uh, of course individual members would be doing charity and philanthropy and csr i know that avnish does lots of charity in his personal capacity but as rai hyderabad chapter would you like to adopt a particular kind of signature program it could be anything I, it's not that i have something in mind which i want to impose on you you can identify a list of half a dozen potential programs and i can guide you on which are the ones which will have the biggest impact which are the ones which the government would like to support because in the 
government's uh, official system, apart from IT and industries, I also look after CSR. So again, uh, I'm trying to push as many companies as possible, as many associations as possible to contribute to uh, charity, to support people. During COVID times, we know that everyone has uh, been very, very generous. We were able to survive COVID, not because of the government, but because of people like you who were so generous in supporting and donating and helping each other. But now that COVID is behind us, that surge amongst ourselves to be of help to others, that should not stop. And this is a good occasion as an association to take some collective responsibility. So please think about it. It's not that I want you to respond to me instantly, but over a period of time, some of you, some of the industry leaders, this uh, Yash is not here today. Yeah. So I saw his name as the sponsors. Yeah, he's right on the top. So, <clears throat> I mean, we can talk to him, you, some of the others. You don't live in Hyderabad, isn't it? Okay, but when are you moving in? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I answered the same thing 10 minutes ago. <laughs> okay, but do motivate the store manager to become a part of the charity work which is happening here. But once again, I'm very grateful to all of you for uh, all the support and uh, all your uh, active uh, dynamism which has converted uh, Hyderabad today as one of the most livable cities in the country. People appreciate the kind of social infrastructure, the shopping opportunities, the hospitality opportunities that they get here. And uh, people who live here have come from different parts of the country, different parts of the world. They really enjoy living here in Hyderabad. So let us spread that in other towns and uh, uh, locations and destinations in Telangana. And some of the other things that I spoke about, I hope you will be able to see value in whatever I shared and hopefully you will be able to reciprocate. So once again, uh, thanks very much for inviting me and have a wonderful uh, uh, sessions ahead. Thank you.